Hello and welcome to the first tutorial in a video series all about how to use the SOLIDWORKS CAD software. I'll be using version 2019, but if you're not, don't worry, most versions around this year will look fairly similar, not much changes from year to year, and if you're just doing basic things, you might not even notice a difference. So the first thing we're going to do is Control N or File New to open up a new document. We have the option for Part, Assembly, and Drawing, and we'll be doing all three of these. But at first, we're just going to be using part, um, making and editing parts is where we'll start. Okay, it'll load up a new document. Um, and this is what you might expect to see in a CAD software. You've got a workspace, lots of tools on the top, our part tree on the left, and we won't be using this at all on the right. Okay, so um, it looks blank, but we actually don't have nothing in the workspace, we've got these three planes that show up by default. Uh, we only see them when they're highlighted because they're hidden, but if we right click on the plane, hit the little eyeball, we can make these shown. So there we go, it's not blank anymore. Um, we don't have any solid parts here, we'll have to make those. Um, but this is a good view to show you how to um, just view the space in three dimensions. Um, you'll need to know how to orbit, how to pan and zoom, um, and all of that can be done very easily uh, with an external computer mouse. Um, if you're on a laptop, I would recommend getting an external mouse. It doesn't have to be fancy. I think I got mine out of the garbage a few years ago. Works just fine. It just has to have three buttons, left, right, and a center scroll wheel. Um, if you don't have that, uh, you'll find it a little bit more challenging. You can also upgrade, get a really nice specialized CAD mouse um, if you're doing it a lot. Uh, someday I'd like to try one, but um, especially if you're just starting out, a good uh, plain external mouse will do you a long way. So the reason why you want that middle button is so that you can scroll easily. If you scroll in and out, you can zoom. Uh, if you just click the middle mouse, you will orbit around in 3D space, and if you hit control while you are clicking the middle mouse, then you can pan around. Um, every CAD software might have a little bit different controls like this. Um, you just have to get used to each one. And uh, in this series, I'll be assuming that you don't have any prior CAD experience, uh, but if you do, that'll only help. Um, if you've used other softwares, most of them behave the same way. You just have to find where all of the buttons are. So. Um, that's how we can navigate the 3D workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and hide these planes now. We won't need to see them um, anymore. And actually, it will show it to us, show us the planes um, if we ever do. Which right now, we actually will um, whenever we start a sketch. When we start a sketch, it will um, show us these planes again. We get to choose one. If we're creating a two-dimensional sketch, um, then it will ask us where we want the sketch to go. And this is why it gives us those planes in the beginning, so we can choose one. Uh, for now, it doesn't really matter which one. I like to start with the top plane most of the time. And how I got to that Create Sketch button, we've got all of these tabs here. Mostly, we'll be working within Features and Sketch. Um, and so under the Sketch tab, that's where we can create a sketch. Um, and now that we're in the sketch, the option is here to exit the sketch. Under the sketch tab, we have all kinds of tools um, where we can create lines and circles and other shapes. Um, and then there's some other fun stuff we can do with those. Also, you'll notice on the left, we have sketch one has appeared over here. Uh, that wasn't there before. Uh, we created that. And in the sketch, I'm going to go ahead and put down some shapes. I'm not going to show you all of these. Um, line, you can just make a shape. Uh, whatever you want, there we go. Um, circle, pretty self-explanatory as well. Um, you just click the center and anywhere on the circumference there. Rectangle, you can choose two, um, two corners. It'll fill in the rest. Um, and another common one, um, which by default is the center arc. You just click on the center, just like the circle, and then the border, and you get to choose how much of the circle you want. Um, there are lots of other ones. I won't go into detail on all of them. Text can be useful. Um, you can make polygons, change how many 
change the number of sides. Um, spline is kind of cool. You can do some shapes that don't really fit arcs or lines. So I'm going to get rid of most of this. Um, just select it and hit delete on the keyboard. And um, I'm going to focus here on this shape. So you'll notice that it is shaded in. The background is white and it's gray on the inside. Um, and if I delete one of these lines, now there's no distinction between the inside and the outside. That's helpful to know because if you are zoomed in here and you think, you think that you closed that shape, but you didn't, you zoom out, it looks like it's all closed up, but you can tell it's not because we have white on the inside and the outside. Uh, you can drag any of these entities around and if you put two points close enough to each other, they'll snap together. There we go. And you can tell it's a closed shape now. We always want to be working with closed shapes. There are a few instances where we don't, but most of the time, a closed shape is good. Um, I won't add any dimensions quite yet or relations. Um, right now, I'm just going to get this into 3D. So you can see I'm orbiting around it, and it's still two-dimensional. I'm just using the middle mouse button. Um, and I can see it's still flat. Um, it's still just a two-dimensional sketch, which is about to change. All we need to do is exit, exit our sketch. And now we'll go from the sketch tab over to the features tab, where we'll see most of our 3D options. And the easiest way to create a three-dimensional part out of a two-dimensional sketch is with this linear extrude boss base, they call it. Um, there's really one important um, number here. There's lots of options all over the place, but this is important to know for the boss extrude. This is just the dimension, um, the length. So you can set this to one inch, hit enter, it'll show you a preview of what our three-dimensional shape will look like. We change this to anything we want. Maybe we want it to be two inches, or um, you could even put in millimeters if you want. Um, it'll automatically convert the units. Got a lot of options. Um, I'm just going to make this one inch, keep it nice and simple. I don't have to change any of these other settings. Um, and hit OK. And that is our first solid part. Um, it's not complicated. We don't even have any dimensions in there. Um, so it's not very useful at the moment. Um, but later on, we'll be learning a lot more about the dimensioning um, relations and making things more complex with more 3D features. Um, but that's the, the uh, bare bones of it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this. Um, if I delete the, if I right click over here on the feature and hit delete, um, hit yes, uh, this is saying that it's not going to delete anything else. If there were other dependencies, it would delete them as well. But you'll notice it didn't delete the sketch. There's a sketch still inside. Um, and if I recreate this boss extrude, um, this time, since I didn't have this sketch selected, um, it doesn't know which sketch I want to extrude. So we have to tell it, even though there's only one. Um, and so we just select this. Uh, click on one of these edges, and it says, oh, we want this sketch. Okay, um, we could change the dimension if we want to, just like before you hit the green check mark to accept a feature. And now we're right back to where we were before. Um, and if we open this up, you can see this sketch inside. Um, and that's the same sketch we've had since the beginning. Even though we deleted our feature, uh, the sketch on the inside is still there. So sketches and features are going to be the basis of pretty much every model we make. And that's where I'm going to leave it for this first tutorial. Um, and next time, we'll pick up with more sketching stuff. We'll get a little bit more complicated with dimensioning and relations. Uh, making a nice uh, sketch that we can make more complicated geometry with. So I hope you'll join me for that um, in learning SOLIDWORKS.